and this is what I'm going to be covering in that time. I'll, I'll just run through this uh, briefly so you know what's coming. I'm going to look at, by way of introduction, what are meningitis, sepsis, and meningococcal disease. I'm then going to give you an overview of infection and the pathophysiology of infection, how the body responds to infection. We'll then look in a little bit more detail, firstly, at meningitis and meningococcal disease, and then at sepsis. I'm going to discuss a little bit after that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on sepsis and meningitis in terms of how those conditions and diseases were managed and how we may see that filter through in some of the claims uh, that will be made over the next year or two. I'll look at why and indeed whether these claims uh, are different and what's challenging about them compared to other clinical negligence claims. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about experts. Obviously, these claims are very much expert-driven and expert-dependent. So I'm going to talk about, based on my experience, how we can get the most and the best out of our experts in uh, these sorts of claims. And I'm going to finish off by uh, looking at some of the cases within this area. I should say at the outset that this is quite a medicine-heavy talk. Uh, there is some law in it, but there's an awful lot of medicine. And it's because I think that we can add quite a lot of value as lawyers if we've got a good grasp of the medicine. And I think it helps us to deliver a good service to our clients if we understand the medical background to these claims. So uh, that's why I think it's worth having a bit of a detailed look at infection and uh, sepsis and meningitis and the medicine behind it.